Well, hello and welcome to PM Express. And indeed, today we have a very, very big conversation. And what is it? It's the Right to Information Bill. This is one bill that's been in Parliament for quite some time. And it's been used as a you know, political football. Uh, just when a government is about to exit power, they quickly try to rush it through to see if it's going to work and then uh, vice versa. But one thing that I want to find out is, you know, we are awash with information as a country. You wake up in the morning and the newspapers is flooded with who embezzled what, who misappropriated what, who is doing something untold. We are awash with this information. And just a minute percentage of these stories or crimes or alleged crimes you know see the light of day in the court of law unlike the one who you know steals a chicken or digs out somebody's cassava who gets seven years i mean those who take the mega bucks you know do the cool two three years and come back to enjoy their bucks what at all will more inform such information do to us is it just kill us we'll sit down and listen to the uh public account committee and it's like just rubbing salt in your wound pages after pages after pages of those who did something that's not right what have we done to them nothing so if indeed parliament passes this law to say yes now you can get more of such information what do we do are we going to now open up new courts or set up new institutions who are going to make sure that indeed when this information comes out we are going to see it through to the end it's a big one uh, but then there's another school of thought that says you know what the rate of corruption that would go down if right of information is open is phenomenal we are here to discuss that you don't want to move away my name is nana ansakwa the fourth chief of the little republic of akwamu edumasa and when i come back we're going to find you right for more information don't go Thank you very much for staying with me in the studio is Dr. Kojo Asante of the CDD. Uh, it's also a, a member of the Right to Information, uh, right to Information Action Campaign Group. And so we're here to get more education on sub this subject. And then joining us later will be Miss Mina Mensa. She's also with the Commonwealth uh, Human Rights for Information. So she also joined the conversation later. Uh, but Dr. Kujo Santi, thank you very much thank for joining you. us. And good, good evening to your viewers. Great, 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 great. What, what, what more information do we need? I mean, we have enough heartbreaking information on a <laughs> daily basis. Front pages, TV, radio. I don't know what the percentage is. Probably one mm. percent would see the light of day in court and even out of that one percent probably 80 percent will not achieve any results so what 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 more information do we need that we can get well thank you um i think uh i mean this is a question that a lot of people ask you know why mm. why do you need a right to information law mm. um there are so many benefits to actually having a legislation that operationalizes uh, our rights under the Constitution. So the Constitution says we have a right to information, public official information. Now, as you can testify, uh, what is um, accurate, credible public information is always uh, a challenge. You know, as the media people will say, they have intercepted a document. Um, but what this legislation, at least the, the version that uh, was uh, withdrawn um, at the end of uh, 2016, the first thing it does is basically create a, a legislative mechanism that obligates public officers to generate certain types of information. So first, it's an obligation to generate certain types of official documents and then to organize it and to manage it and to disseminate it so 
that for me is like a records keeping uh, law. And that is so important because um, as we recently experienced with the Auditor General's uh, uh, audit of the 2016 liabilities, where they discovered that 5.4 billion, you know, basically were monies that we are not supposed to pay that in some parts have already been paid. One of the uh, ch uh, challenges that were addressed, uh, were, were, were raised, was the discrepancy between claims that were made by MDAs, that's ministries, de departments, and agencies, and what was on the files of the Ministry of Finance. Mm. So there were, for every amount, there was some discrepancy as to what, what the Ministry uh, of Finance was supposed to pay and what the MDAs were claiming because there were records that could not be reconciled. And that, so when you have this type of legislation that and imposes a sanction on an officer who basically does not um, um, perform uh, his duties compared to this, it, it forces the, the institutions to begin to really keep records properly. So that you don't, people don't exploit the weaknesses in the system. So for me, that is very important if we're going to be able to deal with all of the challenges we face with corruption, for instance. Because often all of it is really opportunity and a very weak system for accounting and so on and so forth. So that for me is, is one important premise. But if you take the accountability um, impact that it can make, if you take media, because a lot of information really should be just voluntary information that you should be able to get. You want to find out how much a minister earns, you know, how much a taxpayer is paying a minister, all their benefits. You should be able to find out in this one place. The government of office, uh, the office of government machinery, should be able to give you that. How many special assistants are employed uh, at, at the Flagstaff House? You should be able to get that kind of because these are staffers, right? So if you want to know all the staffers in 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 the presidency, and how much they how, are, how, how much, much they, they they are taking and so on, so that you have a sense of you know where is the money being spent in say the president because you might find out that it is heavy in terms of personnel and what you are getting for it might not be so you can make a public policy argument that no. If the budget comes next time, we really should be looking at this aspect because there's too much wastage. You cannot do that under the current regime. You know. So you have to find an investigative general who goes to intercept a, a document to tell you something that you are, as a citizen, expected to know. Because in a democracy, that's what people represent you. They are using your tax money. They should be able to tell you how they are governing what they are using your resources for. Let, let me take you back, staying there. I mean, uh, <clears throat> does it mean that you, uh, I, if this was my ministry, ministry yeah. of yes. um, here, uh, I, 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 and you came for some information. I, yeah. Well, I, I, have, I didn't give the records. I don't mm. have that information. Yeah. Does, this, does this law mandate that, look, you must provide every information, anything that happens here, so that I can come and tell you that, well, well we didn't keep that record. So the, that's why the, I, I mentioned the generation of information. So if you say you are Minister of Trade, so the Minister of Trade will say, okay, I, this is, we are set up to do A, B, C, D, which implies that there are certain types of information that you, you know, uh, will be available, mm -hmm. right? I want to know information. What is your policy um, on whatever uh, factories or you know whatever is under your purview? Mm -hmm. So that generation of information, there's even proposal for a format. You know what, how this should be look, uh, how this should look in every ministry, so that when you go, you basically get almost like uh, an index of the types of information that's available, all right? And even when you the information is not there, but it's something that that particular entity is carrying out. You can request for it. They might say, oh, it might take a while to... So there are like different types of fees that are attached to, depending on the amount of work that needs to be done in order to produce it. 
So like maps, you know, it might be difficult to get photocopy, you know, so you, it might need to be generated or whatever. So it's, it's, it's sort of anticipated all of these things. But you start with basically what, so the, the ministry is going to list. This is the information that we generate in this office in, in an index so that you should be sitting in your office somewhere, go on the website and be able to check what information uh, the Ministry of, uh, I don't know, Special Development Initiatives or whatever has and request. You okay. know, so that you don't go waste your time. Uh, you see, if, if this bill comes into, into play, unless you put a time, I, I'm hoping there's a time code because yeah. there's such a backlog of misinformation sure. and data not collected. That's right. So if, if otherwise, I'll just tell us, look, in 1968, you know, I want to know how much the ministers were paid. Yeah. So is, is this bill going to say, look, from 2015 going, you cannot hide information and maybe from 2015 by you have 30 percent information mm -hmm. how is it going to work so it sits well i think i mean there's a lot of work that would would have to go into uh, sort of operational it's you know there are designs i mean in, both in india and south africa uh, there is an information commission so there are places where even the uk uh, mm -hmm. you know they've developed most of the time you have a, a period where you know people try to pull the information together but there's always uh, a, a starting point, yeah. which is whatever information that you have now, index it. Let us know that this is the information you have. This is something you can generate that. There's information that might be on, on paper. You know, you have to f spend time to digitize it or whatever, and that might be take you. So all of that kind of audit would have to be done to give people a clear expectation of what exactly uh, you are supposed to do. The, we've had some discussions in the past. Initially, there was a, a decision whether we wanted to put it under the Attorney General's office or Shiraj or whoever that can oversee the process. The reason why they didn't want to put it under the AG's office because uh, for a, the AG itself needs to provide information. So. You don't want them to be in a position where, uh, if it's information that they themselves, you know, then uh, you find it difficult. They are supervising others, but then <laughs> they are not able to provide information for themselves. So there's an information commission, like you know, where if a min finally a minister says, "Oh no, we can't give you this information because of public interest or whatever it is," you can go and uh, challenge you know, the request and so on. But there are timelines, the, uh, there are fees attached to it. We, we talked about how to reduce the fees so that it's not, it doesn't prevent people from going to, to ask for information. But I think you need that because with this, it becomes too discretionary what information people want to keep or generate or not generate. So if government wants information on unemployment, be because it's not something that you know we are keeping, or we, the Ministry of Employment and Social Welfare should be <laughs> generating that information because that's what they do. This law would mandate them to do that, and it will be in government's benefit for for that to happen. So that when we ask the president that you know what's the unemployment rate in Ghana, we can have an answer. I want to take a break, but before when I go to come back, uh, yeah. what I want to find out is. We have built a culture of political divisiveness, spitefulness, and you know, some things that people would defend with their blood while in government would quickly go to a position and condemn it with all the venom in them. And it's you know, it's the same thing going on today. You look at Gitmo too and the Americans, yeah. you know, if the roles were turned, I mean, you know what I'm talking about. So with, with a culture like that. I mean, I can imagine the minority having a secretariat that's just literally writing to every... I mean, Bost would have been inundated with, you know, information overflow where they want to know where every liter, every drop had gone. Can the ruling government work with, with you know, with, uh, with a law like this in place? We're coming straight back. 
Well, thank you very much for staying. And we're discussing the Right to Information Bill, which is literally uh, growing roots in Parliament. But just before the break, you know, my question was our uh, spitefulness, our uh, division, our uh, cheap political low jabbing. With a law like this in place, I mean, people are just going to use it just to antagonize. What can you do to make sure that, look, you just want this information for political reasons and therefore I'm not going to give it to you? I think it's unfortunate that political actors have made a fetish of this, you know, this kind of scary, you know, mm. story about, you know, all hell will break loose. This is not the only place in, in the world where there's political competition. I mean, look at America and, and the UK and, you know, all of those things. It's not like people are not as caustic and <laughs> in all of those kinds of places. The Petroleum Commission launched uh, the the uh, register of contracts, for instance. Basically, they put all of the oil contracts online. So now if you go to the Petroleum Commission website, you can actually go and access all of the uh, the contracts. But in addition to that, the progress reports for every well or every company that's doing what well, the, the world didn't come to an end. I, I'm sure even people, <laughs> you know, I'm not... And, and they are opposition in, in, in parliament. Mm. They could go and uh, check it. And, and so I, I, I just think that uh, for most people, if they got good official information about what is happening, unless somebody's trying to hide something, then that's a different story. Then I, that I expect that at the minimum, there should be voluntary disclosure of all of this information. Boss, what? transactions are going on, if it's, it's completely above board, there shouldn't be any any challenges. I don't see, a, I think, as I said, I think people really make a fetish of it. Mm. And that, you know, there's some fear that has been created about how, you know, the place we're inundated with information. People only look for information, they think that something has happened, right? So... I think the other challenge we have yeah. is that yeah. those who have to pass uh, these laws yeah. are those who the law will eventually uh, be against. Because uh, I mean, uh, sit, sit, sitting here, I don't have any, uh, mm -hmm. I don't have any fear whether the law is passed or not. Mm -hmm. But then, if you are heading a ministry, you know, and it's a, it's a sensitive ministry where you are handling lots of money, and you have to sit in Parliament. And then pass a, a law that says, well, anybody can walk into my ministry at any time to come and uh, you know, demand questions, then I'm not going to pass it. I'm just going to delay it. It's, it's really, I, I, actually, it's not your ministry <laughs> in the first place. You know, uh, it's, not your, it's not your ministry. You're a public <laughs> servant, right? You're a public servant. So uh, you are there to serve the public. The information that you are generating is a public information, except it is in the public interest of national security. That's why the exemptions in, in the... But even that, I can go to court and challenge, because it's a constitutional right. What is the national security uh, basis on which you are denying me that information? And the court of competent jurisdiction can determine behind closed doors that, okay, we've looked at the information, the information is very sensitive and therefore you cannot have it. But I think that is very important. You know, this is a democratic imperative. You cannot have a functioning democracy if there is no guarantee to, uh, you know, very clear guarantees to public information. And I think this idea that somehow a public servant who is generating public information has a personal proprietary right to that information and has to then decide on a whim whether to give it to the citizen. And that is, is, is really flawed and I think we need to orient uh, a lot of our public service that, that that is not what democracy does. Well, uh, we have a guest in now, Ms. Mina Mensa, uh, with the Commonwealth uh, Human Rights on uh, Information, right? 
Human Rights Initiative. Initiative, Human Rights Initiative. I'm going to take a quick break, and then when I come back, I want to find out where are we going to draw the exclusions? Because you know I'm in the media, and then I, you know, our good old Manasi would go and fish out for information and bring it. Somebody then writes to multimedia and says, "Look, I want that information. What do we do? Do we then give out uh, Manasi's, uh, uh, you know, contact or his aid? Or how, how does it work? Where do we draw our exclusion?" Bearing in mind that we're in a country where even market fires are a matter of national security. <laughs> so where do we draw our line? We're coming back. <laughs> well, thank you very much for staying. And we are talking about the very, very important subject, right? Information bill, which could be a make or break in the nation. Reduce how much corruption, how much arbitrariness people can run their office. You can walk into somebody's office and literally demand, uh, you know, certain basic information as a taxpayer, as a citizen, that I need to know what's going on here. It's going to be tough, but it has to be done. But then I want to find out, where do we have exclusions? And so, Mina, once you let me give you that. I mean, I remember when there was market fires. Every market was burning, every market was burning. And uh, the information that was coming out was that, number one, uh, there were illegal Connections. connections. Yes. Number two, there wasn't water closed by the market. Mm -hmm. And then number three, there were no access for the uh, fire tenders to get into the market. Those are the three. Every market. Has. In the end, when the Americans came and did the investigation <laughs> and everything, we were told that listen, the information that you know the end results was a matter of national security, mm -hmm. so it could not be disclosed. This is market fires. And there's, there's you saying you want to write information bill. Where will be the cutoff zone that, okay, at this point, we hold on? Um, the Constitution says that um, we can access information subject to certain limitations prescribed by law. Mm. Um, the international standard is that if you are going to limit the information, because access to information is a human right, so technically, I should be allowed access to all any information that I want. But we are in a society where, for the purposes of national security, to, pro, uh, to protect the public good, you would necessarily need to um, keep some information away from the public. They should be very narrow, very limited, and very specific. So for example, the, national, uh, the fires. If there's a part that is national security, it shouldn't be the whole document. If it's a particular page or a particular subject that, is, that has national security implications, you indicate it. And since you are denying me the information, you should be able to give me reasons, not just that it's national security and it ends there. Because you should be able to show me that if you give me that information, it will not be in the public interest. So that is how it's supposed to be because at the end of the day in this country and in a lot of countries you just need to stamp classified mm. on a document and that's it and for all you know it's only a paragraph or a page in that whole maybe a 20 page document that has classified information so the 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 bill is structured in such a way that it's subject to certain limitations and it, it should be prescribed by law so if it's national security specific issues in national security and the and the um, at least uh, the version that we, we we are aware of, there's a harms test yes. that you have to satisfy. So as I was saying, if you are denying me information on the basis of national security, you need to satisfy uh, a court. If I challenge you, you need to satisfy a court that it will cause harm to the national interest. The obligation is on you. It's not me. I don't know exactly. what the national security. So it's for a judge to make that determination. If, if you use the national security. But there are some exemptions that are provided. Uh, um, uh, correspondents in the office of the president, uh, cabinet memos, you know, there are some specific ones, some were to do with the military and so on. We've gone through <laughs> uh, back and forth on, you know, how that is framed. Because if the military is buying tea, you know, uh, for 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 the services, is that national security? Is buying sugar and supplies and all, you know whatever for you know is, is that national security? So then we've gone back and forth on how that is framed, and I think 
as far as we, we, we understand, by the time uh, it, it expired in, with the last parliament, it was, it was good enough for us exactly. uh, to pass, right? And then it had always had the fallback, which was the harms test, yes. that you needed to still satisfy harms test if you were denying information. So I, I think, for me, the exemptions uh, clauses, uh, we've come a long way on, on them, and uh, we were quite satisfied with, with what was presented uh, in 2016. Now, let me announce the numbers, and then uh, those of you who are probably more legally inclined or more patriotic inclined, send your concerns or your suggestions at 054-740-2428. 2428 send your whatsapp message don't call it please don't call it don't call it just send a whatsapp message and i'll read it out for you and i want to find out what, what, i mean going back to my question again and mina I, I put the question to doc let me put it back to you won't it just be a tool to hinder government business where the minority will set up a department of just writing for information, you know, how long is your hair, you know, how much tea did you drink, I mean, just anything. And as soon as you say it's not relevant, well, I'm dragging you to court, get the court to say it's not relevant, they bring you, I mean, won't they use it as a hindering tool? Excuse me, absolutely not. Because you see, if you're assessing information, it's not necessarily to a, 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 the government directly, it's to the public offices. But they're that normally head by a government political figure. Exactly, but you, uh, if the, 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 the bill that we sent and the international standard supports that, there should be an information officer. Mm -hmm. So it goes to the, you, the request goes to the institution that you want the information from. The information officer would be the one to attend to you. If the information officer decides not to give you the information, then it goes higher up. If you don't get the information, if... Uh, what we are anticipating is what we get. Then it goes to an, an independent body before it goes to the courts. So it's a process. In any case, if the information that you are requesting is already in public domain, yeah. you'll be just told where to get it because it's in public domain. Mm -hmm. So I do not think that uh, some of the information that will be requested by the you, you are using the man, minority i guess the minority is government in waiting especially those in parliament most of the documents they might have access to it but not the full content so that part of the content that they don't have and they think that they need is what they are going to ask for so i don't think that um it will be a, initially to be a challenge because you know it's a new thing a lot of people are requesting for information. But in certain jurisdictions, when they realize that this particular information is coming, yes, very yeah. often they just disclose it. Because there's something called proactive disclosure, yeah. where you make information available. Mm -hmm. If it's a website, in whatever form, so that if people want it, you just show them where to go. Mm -hmm. So, for example, if the minority keeps asking information on a specific issue. Bust. 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 Sure, you just sure make every asking. information on Bust. I'm sure they'll be asking I'm about Bust. Help the system. Help the system. The, the, no, the, the, assuming, let's say, in James' era, they passed this bill. I mean, the Nana Kufuado era would have rendered the bill useless. Because, I mean, there are about, what, 16 more in, in this ministry of dividing the nation, Zongo ministry, mm -hmm. this. So you write to him and say, look, well, I can't give you any information mm -hmm. because, you know, I'm not, I'm not on this bill. Mm -hmm. You know, how, how does this bill cater for ministries that are dying and those that are being born? Well, I think it, it relates to a public office. So basically, you go back to the constitutional definition of what is a public agency, who is a public officer, and that's everybody who draws from the consolidated fund. So whether you are you are dead or you are revived, <laughs> basically, you have to it automatically you become once you're drawing from uh, from you know public resources including state enterprises and, and so on who may have where government might have partial uh, uh, interest or equity in 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 in, in, the, in, the, in the in the company and so on and so forth so it's the is the broad definition of of what a public agency is and who a public officer is and those kinds of definitions are also provided uh in the law so that it's something that should look into the future because you don't know, uh, somebody might come and say, "No, I'm 
putting three or four ministries together, somebody might come and say, I'm splitting whatever ministries. Uh, once they do that, and as I was saying, the, the obligation to generate certain types of information is what is crucial. Because that's what allows us to know what information uh, any particular agency is keeping. Uh, but as Mina was saying, one of the important principles is proactive disclosure. If you, if you, you put the information out, as I said, as you were saying, if you go to Ministry of Finance website, there's a lot of good information on the budget, on the fiscal data. Uh, if you go to Bank of Ghana, the same thing. So there's, there's good information there. And I'm sure some place like Bank of Ghana, so you probably will not be getting as much requests because a lot of the stuff that people use for statistics and so on, you probably get it on the website. Mm. And they'll be left with maybe matters that maybe they are not paying attention to. That, uh, so I think if all of the agencies are putting out, disclosing the information, it, it will be quite easy uh, for, 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 the, for the law to work. In addition, you see, um, there will be the need to, and we'll be obliged to do so, to strengthen Pratt, the public records oh, yeah. and uh, the archives, archives yeah. department. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, public agencies are supposed to deposit um, their archival information mm -hmm. there. So let's say you are an agency that is dying or mm -hmm. uh, it's being transformed or reformed or whatever name we might choose to give it. What happens is all that information should be transferred mm. to uh, Pratt so that if somebody requests for that information, yeah. then they could go into the archives and get um, that information out. As things are, because um, there's no access to information law, but well, the legal framework is not there, and there's no obligation, except for the con constitutional obligation, mm. on public officials to um, release information. If you go, the person will tell you that I don't have the information. Mm because there's no obligation on him to mm, keep the records. Yeah. But if the law is passed and you are obliged to give the information, you would make the effort to keep yeah. the information and send it to Pratt when need be, so that when the information is requested of you, you can go back there and retrieve the information. Yeah. The, the number again is 054 0547402488. Like with everything else we fight and we make sure there's a bill in it and you know when we because of our we are blessed with good language we write the finest laws and just as we are blessed with good language i think we are blessed with the best carpenters either so we shelf all our laws <laughs> and they are all shelved beautifully uh, I, mean, I remember doctors say fighting fighting for the mental health bill yeah. eventually got it and i'm sure it stuck somewhere neatly yeah. on a shelf somewhere implementation yeah. so we will get this thing passed implementation how is it going to be possible because this is one of those things where we have been very, very terrible at keeping records. Yeah. Really terrible at keeping the basic of records. Yeah. Uh, I mean, implementation, I mean, the courts will be in, in inundated mm. because you will be upset that, oh, no, you must have this information. Mm. And probably, you know, the clerk never wrote it down. And, and so, oh, well, they never wrote it down or somebody took it home. Ooh. <laughs> which is also that happens after every transition. It happens after all. People actually take, you know, official information home. I mean, the fact that people still use Google, uh, Gmail for official you know, uh, communication and correspondence is a real problem because it's part of that, you know, uh, that record in for on, the, on the electronic side. Mm. Because you need that, that correspondence to sit in on the server at the ministry and not somebody's personal, you know, so that you have an issue and now you want to go and check you know, if the the recent uh, U.S. example involving the mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the Clintons, Clintons, not, not even I had the Clintons yes. or even uh, the FBI uh, director, you mm. know, who were exchanging, because they were able to, they were using official uh, phones and official. You could go and and basically look at this correspondence that go over time. You know, if right now something happened and a lot of ministers. A lot of uh, public servants are using Gmail, um, and I, I, I pity them because NITA, which is supposed to provide that service, doesn't 
it's not doing uh, as good a job. But all of that comes into, in, into play in terms of providing the infrastructure for this kind of record keeping. But Nana, the, the question is, you have to start from somewhere. Mm -hmm. And we need to be able to keep records if you can run a modern state. This is what the Ministry of Finance should be interested in. This is what you know the president should be interested in, because they themselves struggle to get information. Yes. They want information, on, you know, from the uh, Ministry of Agriculture about crops and whatever, and, and you know, people are not keeping good information, and that becomes a problem. You go, you go and say something, it turns out that you are wrong. You go and report to Parliament, and you turn out that the figures you were giving are completely false. You know, so. In the transition, if you recall, mm. same thing. The senior minister was complaining that, oh, they got incomplete information and so on and so forth. So I think that it is in our interest. Just even for me, I mean, if you take Manasseh's uh, uh, stuff he did on the, on the local government, contrast that he could easily should be able to get, you know, That's just by writing a letter and get, I mean, you have to go to court and, you know, press. These are basic things, and then he can spend his time, if he wants to do investigating generally, on something that really people are hiding. But these were so, ba so basic that it should have been available. So I, I think we have to start somewhere in terms of getting a culture of record keeping. Let me, let me catch up with some of the messages that you have sent in. 054-740-2488. The reason why the powers that be are deliberating about this key bill is that the public will know how the politicians have messed them. Like, for example, the alleged 5000 US uh, $5,000 that was given to each member of the House when Ghana Telecom was sold. You see, that's, that's the fear. You see, automatically, they start going in for the uh, political uh, <laughs> angle. But this one says, we need this right to, de uh, to deepen our democracy, improve accountability, and fight corruption. If the politicians are faithful in the uh, stewardship, then they should give us this right as responsible citizens. You didn't add your name there. Emmanuel Mensa says, good evening. No, no, good evening. I think the US government can send our soldiers to their country to train them. OK, mm -hmm. so you are talking about something mm -hmm. else. We'll do that show another day. This one says, hi, Nana. The vice president have proved me right that he is uh, super OK. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't send me insult. You know I can read that. <laughs> Uh, but keep your messages coming. Okay, let me take this last one before I come into studio. I believe the right to the right to information bill, if passed, will help reduce uh, incidents of corruption. However, how is the said bill going to deal with information relating to national security, which must be kept secret for safety's sake? Then again, it will not lead to lots of invasion of privacy. Hmm. But overall, you, you, well, it's a silly question, but let me still ask you. You think that this is good, it will reduce corruption, and then, and then what else? I think it will just okay. start to <laughs> that out. It will also empower people. Hmm. Because you see, information itself is power. There are several policies that government has. There's one that I always talk about, I've been talking about for some time. Apparently, there is um, some scholarship available. Yeah. Um, from the Indian government, mm -hmm. where every year a number of students are supposed to be given scholarships um, to India to do some courses. And until so somebody came to work in my office who went through that, I didn't know, and a lot of people did not know. And according to that same person, that year that she went, Ghana was given 10 slots. We were only able to fill five. And she was, got it because she knew somebody who knew about it. So it's not only about fighting corruption, it's not only about uh, mm -hmm. trying to find out things about people, but it's supposed to empower you as the, an individual. For example, um, farmers have certain facilities. If they don't know, how, did they, how are they able to assess those things to improve their lot? But then if you don't know, how do you assess it? I mean, if I didn't know that there's some 
fund for journalism somewhere. I mean, I, unless you write, keep writing letters, look, has anybody got a fund for me or something? So it's, it's, it's even getting to know. I mean, somebody sent a message, you didn't add any but who qualifies to seek information for, uh, for use, you know, specifically? Everybody. Why, why, why well, should, why should why Everybody, so long as you live in this country. <laughs> okay, let me give you a clear example. Imagine that there's a, um, there's a, um, uh, um, an outbreak of a disease, for example, and we are giving information, but not enough information, mm. and you don't have the power to request for more information on that outbreak or whatever it is. And you leave it to speculation. And you leave it to speculation. What will happen? People say all kinds of things. Meanwhile, if there is... Um, the, the, the fact that it wasn't totally disclosed and you can access the information. You can go and say that, okay, this is what was disclosed. I want A, B, C, D to inform myself. And you can also inform others. So apart from helping with the corruption issue, apart from keeping um, uh, public officers accountable, it empowers you, the individual, as well. The... the uh haven't we got enough information as it is already? I mean, aren't, aren't we overloaded with information which we don't do anything about or we do very little about? Maybe we have information that has been given to us. This is what has been given to us. What if the information that I need is not part of the so many information that is available? What I'm, I want is not there. I should be able to assess that. So, yes, it's true. There's a lot of information. But it's the information in the form that I can use. If you put all kinds of figures um, maybe on a website, and my grandmother is in the village, she doesn't even know how to use a computer, let alone go on a website. And she goes to her assembly, because normally the assembly will break it down mm. to the level that applies to your environment. Mm. And she goes there, and they are like, what do you need the information for? And that's the first yeah, question they'll ask <laughs> you. What do you need the information for? <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> what do you need well, I mean, I mean, in this case, if I need the information, I, need, I don't have to give you a reason why I need information. No, no. Yeah, you shouldn't. You I should mean, why, can why you please supply me, you know, yeah. how many people work here? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, well, but why, why, should that be, why should that be of, uh, you know, maybe if you're gone to the Ministry of Defense or whatever. Well, why, 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 why is that? I mean, you know, what, what are you this, is not, this is not your private, it's not like you are running a private company. I'm coming and saying, I want your, even these days, private companies whose uh, operations impact on, on, on the public in some way will feel obliged to, you know, tell you, you know, these kinds of information. Uh, because even when, when the, the Unibank goes, goes under, everybody now is looking to the state to make sure that. Uh, their, you know, their deposits and so on are safe. So there is even a public interest, a public good, in making sure that very accurate information comes from even private companies. Because at the end, when something happens, it's still the public uh, that is going to have to ensure uh, that you know people do not suffer from the fallout. So I mean, we I think we learn lessons. I think in the modern society. Uh, you are better off providing, having proactive uh, disclosures so that people and the citizens get empowered. We have this MPP and DC problem because the people who have power are the people who have access to information. And then they, you, they mediate. So the citizens cannot sit, you know, and, oh, all right, I, there's one district, one factory or there's one million, one constituency. I want to see what projects are coming to my constituency. Can I get that information? So that I don't have to wait for a politician to come and tell me that, oh, you know, we heard that this project is coming into your constituency and it's not right and it's not this. And you are reliant on that because you don't have any direct access. Because of time, Parliament is saying that, look, maybe not in this Parliament, they have to, you know, you know, recess and come back and look at it again. Uh, I know you guys are putting pressure, but what, what's, what's, are they likely to look at it or do they have to go and come back? Well, our, our, our uh, demand is basically just a very basic one. Mm -hmm. We have said that as we left it in 2016, it was in good shape. All we wanted is to be laid. 
we are we appreciate that you cannot deliberate on it and pass it before parliament rises tomorrow but it can be late it can be late and once it's late then the process starts parliament will do the consultation and so on when they come back normally when you, are you lay, sure they won't tweak it and water it down well that's so that we we are here yeah. that you all of us we yeah. are here to police it yeah, exactly like we did it the last time what we've been doing for the last what 17 years mm. that we always constantly engage with parliament to make sure that it's 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 credible it's not just that somebody throws something to you you know this is this is for all of us this one so, says uh, good evening and how well will it or will it not uh, the RIT help the office of the special prosecutor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> very well. <laughs> very, very well. Very well. I think you've just reminded them that never to even pass it. <laughs> very well. All too soon, that's what time would allow us. Uh, but I give you this number, which is uh, 024 366 2001. 024 366 2001. Tanti's Fashion, the Clinic. They make my shirts for the show. If you give them a call wherever you are, they will send you. A shirt. I want to say thank you so much to Dr. Santi and Mina Mensa for educating us on the need for the right to information bill. As I always say, we'll be back to do this all over again. Thank you very much for watching. Mama.